Hello, I'm Steve King with FlowServe Energy Transition Group. As a leading company in the flow control industry, FlowServe and I would like to thank you for joining us for this overview of the carbon capture utilization and storage technologies and the products that are serving that industry. CCUS is one of the largest sustainability programs in the world focused on the reduction of greenhouse gas. Today's agenda will include a typical CCUS flow diagram, a simple definition of what CCSU means, four primary processes of the CCUS technologies that are dominant in the marketplace today. We'll also have you a, a typical flow diagram for each technology. We'll describe the simple CCUS systems life cycle. We will share with you the estimated projections by source to reach the net zero goal in 2050. We we'll also give you estimated capital investments associated with each goal. We'll discuss the average cost associated with each technology, share with you the flow serve sustainability plan, share some flow control solutions for processing, transportation, and storage, and provide you with some criteria for finding the right partner, minimizing the number of vendors that are required today. Here we talk about the definition of the carbon capture utilization and storage. Before we do that though, let's talk about the typical two-stage amine systems for capture. This is a post-combustion process. As you can see, it's very complex where you bring the flue gas feed in, goes through several steps. Uh, you have to have a lot of technology, but this technology has been used for decades. We'll talk about that momentarily. The carbon capture utilization and storage is often referred to as a carbon capture, and some people will say CCUS. It's a sequestration of the CO2 emissions at source, preventing it from being expelled into the atmosphere. The total process includes the capture of the CO2, the transport, and the utilization and storage. The transport can be done with pipelines, truck, tanks, rail cars, ship, all the way to the end use storage. Utilization has been used for decades in applications such as enhanced oil recovery. It's where they pump it into the well, pressurizing the well and changing the viscosity of the crude so that it's easier to produce. It also can be used as feedstock to potential applications such as carbonization of soda or even water. In some cases, they use it for greenhouse gas farming. However, it's not a permanent capture when you do that. It can be transformed into useful products, either through chemical or biological processing. Storage can be stored in designated sequestration sites, typically located several miles or kilometers beneath the surface, in abandoned wells, in salt caverns, uh, beneath geological formations, i.e. coal veins. Uh, it also can be produced into products like cement and concrete blending back in for more permanent storage. The next couple of slides, we're going to talk about the primary capture technologies. As you see on the left-hand side, the post-combustion is the dominant. It's probably used 70% of the time or more in some instances. But this technology is uh, reliable, has been used for decades. It was one of the original technologies developed for the enhanced oil recovery process. But basically what it's doing is pulling in the flue gas from the plant or source, and it's uh, being uh, is separated at 85 to 90% uh, rate. So it's not as clean as some of the other technologies, and you'll see that a little later. But as we talk about it, it's a process where the, they go through a tower, the amines flow downward, capturing the CO2 and the exhaust gases rise, and then it goes through a separation stripper, and uh, the CO2 is then sequestered, pumped into a pipeline to storage sites. The technology on the right is what they call pre-combustion capture technology. It's the second most dominant, uh, second most common process but it's extracting the CO2 from the hydrocarbons before the flue gas combustion. It's a very complex technology, but it's very reliable. The oxygen fuel is basically a technology that's making a lot of inroads today. 
It is almost, uh, it's processed in an almost pure oxygen environment. So as you can see the process not only captures the CO2, but it eliminates the emissions uh, with the use of various gas capture technologies. It remains relatively expensive uh, because of the additional cost and, and fuels it takes to process it. But uh, the additional technology is really winning over some people because it's uh, very environmentally friendly. Uh, the problem with it is scaling up, uh, and the scaling up is very expensive, but the cost is coming down. So uh, that's uh, that's a unique thing of the technology advancement. The direct air capture technology is quite interesting. It is known as DAC, D-A-C, but it pulls CO2 directly out of the atmosphere, uh, and this can be put in the middle of a field uh, near a source. It doesn't have to be on site. It doesn't have to be bolted up. However, the, the downfall of this is that the, by the time the, the, if the gases get into the air, they get diluted. So the capture rate of this is quite low. The CO2 is uh, uh, sometimes in the four to five percent, where some of the other technologies capture at rates of eight to 12 percent. And so the cost per ton is a little bit high today. But there's, this is a unique because it can be added on or bolted on and expanded very easily and very rapidly, and it's becoming pretty popular in areas where space is limited. Here we have a, just a simple CCUS systems life cycle process, basically showing you where you go through the carbon capture unit, you go into compression and conditioning, and then you transport it and then you store it. And the thing that's really interesting about this is a lot of people find that they've got one part of this life cycle, but not all four. And I think that's one of the challenges that we're going to face in the industry is how do we connect the capture of the CO2 to the sequestration process to, to permanently store it or to use it for some things. There's a lot of money being invested in the transportation today because that is the weak link in this whole process. And as you can see, FlowServe has some control solutions that support the entire life cycle. Here we share with you some uh, projected carbon capture by source data from IEA. This is an organization that provides a lot of statistics. I encourage you to look at it. You can see their IEA.com. But as you can see, they forecast uh, the need to be net zero by 2050 should be close to eight gigatons. Today, we're barely making the scale, right? We're just barely up there. But as you can see, the various technologies we've talked about in the past continue to grow in popularity. However, there's a lot of focus on industry combustion technology, trying to keep the cost down and cleaning up their environment. Companies are spending a lot of money in industry processing trying to clean up their act. Uh, but there's uh, some areas as they're seeing growth. I mean, there's companies out there that have technology that captures CO2 and hydrogen production at the same time. So there's a huge push in that area too, which is a forecast for, it's their solution to electric vehicles, right? They're their alternative, I should say. The annual average capital investment for the net zero targets you could see some areas by sector will continue to shrink uh, and they're gonna to continue to focus on this area. But there's a, a lot of areas that are continuing to grow and you can see areas like uh, electricity systems, electrification, those type things are growing. But the, the market is forecasting a downward capital investment requirement primarily because they're banking on the advancement of the technologies that's out there today. So this is the question that comes to me all the time. What is it gonna cost me to put in a CCUS system? Well, that's really subjective. That's uh, an area that a lot of people are yet to figure out. And the reason it is, is because it really depends on the technology you apply to your system. It really depends on the cost of your fuel, and it really depends on the cost of your assets and the fabrication of the installation, all the different things, the permitting, all of that comes in. But I can tell you that the research has demonstrated that in the United States, the cost could be as low as $20 a ton or up to $150 a ton with an average weighting of about $58. 
in some instances, the break-even carbon price based on the pre-tax targets by the IR uh, over the entire project life. There are some average costs ranging uh, in other parts of the world that gets the cost down to low $20. However, Europe is still of, of in excess of $100 a ton. Part of it is the price of the fuel that they use to have to capture the carbon. Other uh, is the technology and the amount of concentration they do. Um, if you start looking around, zero emission uh, platforms have supported these cost estimations, so there's a lot of research. And as you see down below, the additional resources that are available to us today, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really unlimited, right? So I would encourage you to research some of this technology, look at it a little closer. I, the reason I'm doing because most of these projects today are targeting low-hanging fruit, to be honest with you. They're looking for the high concentrations of CO2, getting the best, best bang for their buck. And so they're looking at capturing as much as they can in a short period of time. Um, however, there's other areas where the expansions will be required and the costs will be uh, questionable. But the, when you start looking at the overall process uh, with the advancement of technologies to develop uh, with a unique uh, approach to the industry, you are seeing forecasted where the prices will go down 20 to 25 percent over the next two decades. Uh, building out of the projects uh, will lead to the streamlining of design and it will help our costs come down. One of the things you have to be aware of, though, is that the biggest challenge today, and this is today, there's a lot of research and a lot of effort going into this. There's companies popping up everywhere that's getting into the transportation of CO2. So there's uh, a lot of studies been done geographically around the world about sequestration sites, Northern Lights. You've got several different areas in Europe that's looking at sequestration sites. United States, the federal government back in the 80s and 90s found nine different sites in the United States. There's one going in in the Midwest right now. It's a, it's a huge infrastructure covering over five states, so it's a, it's a new process, but if they're going to put it in a sequestration site up in the Midwest. So there's a lot being developed at this point. When we introduced ourselves earlier in this presentation, I brought up the subject of selecting a partner. What are the criteria for selecting a partner? Uh, it's, I think it's important to understand that you need a partner that's going to be there for the long haul, right? A partner that's going to provide you the services and the products that you expect. A partner that's going to get in on the engineering end of it before you even purchase it and start designing the right tools and the right products that's going to give you the efficiencies, the capex and opex value that you're looking for. You need to get a dedicated resource from the company from that partner. That partner needs to provide the team, the equipment, and the commissioning support. All steps of this process are critical to your success, so you want to look for that. One other thing that's important is having that resource stay intact long after you've started up the operation, so don't let them get away from you and not give you that support. You want them to provide you some assurances on the low OPEX too, right? What things like extended warranties, you've got some life cycle benefits, you've got some monitoring performances, uh, how we measure energy efficiencies, you've got predictive analytics, preventive maintenance schedules, those type things. Find somebody that's going to give you those as well. In many instances, the willingness of your partner to have skin in the game is also critical, right? Because you don't want someone to come in and sell you something and disappear after the product's been delivered, right? So they should be willing to invest in various ways, such as even equity in some cases, in kind and terms. So there's a lot of different things you can do there. Be, be creative with your partners, expect the best, and reach out and ask for the best. I share with you the uh, FlowServe Sustainability Plan uh, because I wanted you to be aware that we are as committed to the greenhouse gas reduction as you are. We come up with this concept called diversification, decarbonization, digitization, which is our 3D uh, sustainability plan for the energy transition that we're going through. FlowServe is very committed to this. We want to support the energy systems around the world. We also want to support the CO2 emissions reduction. And of course, improvements through efficiency, productivity, and sustainability, and safety. Safety is big. 
So all these different things come into play, but it allows us to support the energy sector transformation. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide. I just basically wanted to communicate our commitment to the CCUS industry. As you can see, we're continuing to work on advanced technologies. We have a very broad uh, second to none portfolio in the world for flow control solutions. But we also are driving that technology push. So when you see us out there asking really weird questions, there's a motive behind that. We want to bring you the advanced technology. So we're constantly evolving and we'd like your feedback and support on some of this. Some of our great accomplishments over the years as we've launched the things like our Red Raven technology where we put IoT at your step so that you know what your product and your performance of your system is doing any given time of the day. So those are some of the kind of things. So engineered solutions for CO2 capture, transport, and storage is our game today. This is in conclusion, you know, I wanted you to just kind of summarize this a little bit. We have a very broad flow control portfolio. We look at the CCS solution problems out there. We look at the life cycle. We try to design all of our products to, to give you products that serve you from the front door to the back door. We have a life cycle model in our own internal that allows us to provide support and partnerships throughout the extended life of your facility. And of course, then we're willing to be creative and innovative to support you as well. I thank you so much for your time today. There's a lot to be shared with you today, but I think it's important if you have questions that these are the numbers you can reach out. Again, keep in mind, energy transition is in motion and diversification, decarbonization, and digitization is the key elements of making that process successful. And we do that through a lot of different ways, but our energy advantage program that we offer out there is focus primarily on cutting your costs, saving you money. Thank you so much. Have a great day.